Right, welcome everybody to our June meeting of the Venues and Communications meeting. Open the meeting with 9722 declarations of any disclosable peculiar interest. Oh, thank you. That's none shown, thank you. Mm -hmm. So 9822, apologies for absence. Okay. Okay, so 9922, the minutes of the meeting held on the 11th of May, which were received by full council on 31st of May. Are you all happy for me to sign those as a true record? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed, thank you. So then on to 100 stroke 22, action points from the previous meeting. Um, we had the committee office to prepare a revised marketing strategy for the next meeting um, and referred to those outlets councillors identified the officers will investigate. No, so do we want to just have it up? Yeah, one? so total um, on those? So I'll cover I'll cover the first point uh, in agenda item 10322. Okay. Um, the second one will probably come through the marketing report of 10222. Um, in terms of uh, investigating further uh, suggestions, again, we do link, I do um, talk about that in uh, in another agenda item, but we are continuing to explore opportunities with um, with some of the new tenants, like uh, the new sweet shop. Uh, we would have already looked to do a, uh, a Willy Wonka golden ticket campaign, which was going to go in tandem with um, Charlie and the Shop at Factory performance at the Carnegie, but unfortunately that was cancelled by our third party hirer. Um, so it's to follow those kind of things throughout the year that we we, we will keep talking to Jade and, uh, and other members of the um, of the, the the marketplace uh, tenants and see whether we can um, we can interact with them and uh, and carry on. So, um, but we are also putting on some Sunday events uh, for August, uh, which will be pitched to uh, families. Um, over the course of the weekend, we did talk to lots of individuals that came forward and said that you know they wouldn't mind getting involved in in, in this kind of event. They had things like um, small fairground rides and things like that. They could bring uh, other side shows and stuff. So we're, we're trying to put together um, some really interesting stuff on, on Sunday afternoon. If you remember, we used to do this kind of thing with the Friday night night markets. Um, but we're going to try something on a Sunday afternoon, which might get more families there. Um, so I'll pick up the other points as we go. OK, so then 101.22 financial update. Before I start talking about the next document, but first of all, let me apologise for circulating it so late. It is hot off the press. Uh, the two public holidays last week, invoices were coming in fast and furious. So I managed to get most of them processed uh, by Easter then. But what I thought I'd just do is really just talking about the financial report overall, and then we can go into a little bit of the detail. Um, we as a council have developed a financial reporting system that really reports against budgets. So we do a budget at a, at a committee level. We report at a committee level. We, our chart of accounts is structured around the, that, that particular uh, reporting structure, and that's how we present reports. Now, I know there have been some comments from this particular committee that you might find these reports unhelpful, or there might be other things that they should be telling you. And the purpose of really just having this little bit of a preamble is to just to really talk about that. Um, one of the things that we do have, you know, someone has indicated that if we put staffing costs, we'll be able to assess profitability. There is no way that these reports could ever assess profitability. You'd have to do that outside of the reporting and accounting system because that's just the nature of the organisation. The reason I make that, that point is that if you look at everything we do, I mean, I'm in finance, but I, you know, if I have to upload work on the uh, website, I do it. 
because of there's no one else around. I do, do, I, do, do I sit down and allocate that time? David works on so many things, you know, if he has a busy month of Jubilee, for example, like we just had, that would reduce the amount of time that we could allocate it to other activities. So because we're such a small team and we get them, we come across, we do a whole lot of, bit of, of roles, would actually be quite dis uh, misleading to kind of sit down and say, well, this month we're going to allocate you know, 40 percent of our time to this activity. Next month, because we have more committee meetings, we spend 60 percent of our time. And all you do is, at the end of the day, just, we'd have to keep track of all these costs, all these times, and we don't have the capacity or the systems to actually process that. So I think that's really the, the key point that I want to make. Yeah? Um, and it could be very misleading. And I'll use the example of the sessional workers. We use sessional staff. We replace two permanent staff, and we have sessional staff. And those sessional staff, they come in at a relatively lower rate of pay than a permanent staff. But if we had to, if we, if, you know, we could structure it so that we use them to do all the extra, all, all our events on the weekends, etc. And then the permanent staff wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, do that type of work. So if we have a quiet time, the permanent staff would be sitting in the office, whereas previously, uh, our, our current model is that they would actually be working the weekend. We might have a quiet Monday, Tuesday, the staff take the toil and they do it that way. So overall, I think we're looking after the best interest of the council. If we had to do it on a pure profitability basis, it would make sense not to use any of our permanent staff, use them for other tasks, and their costs would stay there, and overall the council wouldn't do well. Now, what I, the point I'd like to make is that it, it's, we can have data that measures activities, we can have data that measures uh, profitability, but what you have to do is you have to do that at the budgeting stage. So you do an activity-based budget, you break it down into the various activities, you cost those out, and then you end up with a, with a sales figure, for example, on your commercial activities, and then you can work out a cost of sales, and then you have qualitative data that you could monitor during the year. But I think to sit down and say on these reports that we can do that, it's just not possible to do that. You know, I'd have to employ another two, one or two staff members to do all the costing, and I'm not too sure that that would, would, would add, add any value. So my suggestion going forward would be that if we, as a committee, if we want to have certain of those um, kind of profitability analysis, we sit down, we do an activity-based budget, look at it, build it down, build it back up to the various proponents, and we say, well, the salary costs will go to personnel, we know what the salary costs are, these costs will go somewhere else, and we'll end up in a position where we could actually have a credible budget but some qualitative data that you would look at. So, for example, you know, just thinking of some things off the top of my head, what is bar sales per hour open or per staff member hour worked? What would be your, you know, your weekly sales at the tea room, et cetera, and you could actually do that type of thing. So that's really the context of the report. And I just, you know, I know that there has been a lot of criticism, but I think it's just, just understanding where we come from and how we can actually resolve it going forward without necessarily creating a huge burden on finance and also not presenting information that can that ask more questions than it actually answers. So we'll stop there and then, and then continue with the actual financial report. Thank you. Yeah, going on for what you're saying, because I just want to get an understanding. So if I look down the list, it says Queen's Jubilee 2005. This, the, um, these may not have been budgeted. But when you're saying that cost two thousand and five, um, I, I think what we're saying is, I think what the committee would like to know: did that include all the wages for the staff that we needed that weekend? So that's it. That is actually what it cost just to put that on. So whether it was flowers or food or so that's our that's that's external costs. Cost. Yeah. 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 So, so, so can I? Can I? Yeah, yeah, I'm just getting, I'm just oh, sorry. Your understanding of that, you know. Okay. Well, I'm, obviously, you know, then the staff hours come in later. Yeah, that's sorry, can I, fine. I know Terry wants to come back. Can I just quickly just answer that question? Uh, there's two parts to that. The first one, in actual fact, uh, I mean, you know, Alan's been working tremendously hard in terms of trying to get the agar sorted and things like that. We are one staff member down, or his team are one staff member down, so it's, it's put an extra burden on it. So this has come out late. I haven't really looked at this too too closely uh, coming into this meeting. But one thing I would say is that two thousand five hundred pounds, uh, five pounds, shouldn't be in this budget. It should be in tomorrow's heritage and town events budget. So there's two thousand pounds less of expenses against this particular. Uh, 
this particular uh, budget. If you look at some of those, in fact, we haven't quite caught up um, from an accounting perspective in terms of bar income or, or tea room income. I get copies of the daily till or the event till receipts. I can tell you that that is higher than that. So instead of being minus eight and a half thousand pounds, it should really be just on those few factors, minus four. Um, the first month, as I as I um, as I reported last month, we did have a, a few late cancellations. Uh, we didn't do a mayor's ball, for instance, and that usually generates uh, a significant amount of bar income. So, but minus four thousand is not a tremendous uh, shortfall because as we kick in with more bar events going through the year, um, that's that's a couple of bar events. And if you looked at our calendar in December, I'm not fearful of being too far off the mark at this moment in time. In terms of staffing, Brenda, I can tell you that the Jubilee uh, events, we only actually used two sessional staff, as well as the full-time uh, or the, the team's um, full-time staff. And when I say full-time, there actually is only Tom, myself and Kate, who is really funded by the NHLF, but she does additional seven hours to do some of our events. We're the only ones with a 37 hour contract. Baber is 30 hours. Uh, Emma is 20 hours. Amber is 20 hours, but she fully is an NHLF contracted schools liaison officer. She wasn't in at the weekend. Um, and we had a couple of extra sessional staff. So um, I know there was a lot of criticism, but the the team worked tremendously hard to, uh, to, to deliver those events with a very limited team. Um, in fact, um, as usual, when we have these big events, uh, the town clerk was always uh, also there shifting furniture and things like that. So we all tend to muck in. Leading up to it, uh, I must praise Nick's team, who again is one staff member down. Uh, you've got a tremendous uh, schedule of work to do, but Graham himself and um, uh, the new temporary guy who's uh, covering one of the uh, members of staff that's off sick worked again really, really hard to get us in, in, a, in good shape for the Jubilee. Whether people that actually like the Jubilee events or not, I'll cover that tomorrow. Um, but that's just just to answer your question, Brenda. Tony, you want to come in? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about um, Jubilee because obviously that comes under the Heritage and Town Events Committee, as David mentioned. But um, I do share his um, uh, thanks for the staff because I, you know, I saw them firsthand on the first day, um, you know, working very hard to put on what they put on. So uh, I just wanted to say that rather than ignore it. Um, talking about finance for um, V and C. Um, I don't think anybody has sat around this table and said we want an absolute detailed breakdown to pound, shilling and pence of absolutely everything. But I think there could be a fairer reflection of the costs presented in these accounts. So, for example, uh, the two obvious ones is one is business rates. They are specific to the venues that we uh, are responsible for as a committee. And it would not take much time at all, I would think, to include within either these accounts or even a separate note too, so you don't mess up your sort of accounting system, an awareness for the committee of what uh, rates bill there is for the properties that we are responsible for. And then secondly, we've acknowledged that uh, salary staff members do whatever needs to be done. That's the nature of the beast and it's a small team and uh, you could be employed to do one thing and end up particularly on big events like the Jubilee doing all sorts of things. But there are sessional staff who are specific to the venues and whilst they occasionally uh, may be um, uh, called away to do other roles, if you are the lion's share of your role is serving in the bar or serving in the tea rooms, that is a cost to the council and I think it uh, and specific to those venues and again I don't think it would be too much work to include that within these accounts either in a specific line or as a separate attachment so that we are aware because it is important that we as councillors are aware of the cost of providing the services that we provide whether that is the Giltorn Carnegie or toilets or any of the other things that we provide um, and I will hold my point that I don't think these accounts in the way that we've had them presented thus far are a true and accurate reflection because there are other costs in the background that should be uh, bear, you know, kept in mind when we are looking at this finance. If we don't include them, what's presented to us on this report each month 
is not worth it, in my view, because there are so many other things um, which we're not looking at at all. We might as well, you know, scrap the whole finance report, frankly, because um, we're ignoring an awful lot of information, which is very important. Can I ask a I mean, just, just to show you that we haven't come uh, that well prepared. I mean, David said that the bond figures that he sees are higher and the, and, and the country figures are higher. The fact is that we remove that when we do these reports, reports that he sees have vetted it, so they'll obviously be, they'll be a lot higher. We, I, we have posted all the income up to that particular point in time. But just to go on, I, I think it's, this committee approves this particular budget. You know, when, when we came in, 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 in November, December last year, this committee approved the figure that's in the budget line, and that would be approved. If you want more information as to what is there, you know, that's like I had a brief discussion with David yesterday. We just do an activity based budget, so you can have a lot more information. But the thing is, it's, you know, Terry's, like Councillor Jeremy's mentioned two things. But why then exclude insurance? Why exclude so many other costs? Salaries are 50% of our costs, you know, as an organization. And there are a number of fixed costs. Do we take into account the waste disposal costs? Because half of that, you know, that's also related to it. And it's where do you start, where, where do you start and where do you win? Because if you want figures, you want either those to be accurate, uh, uh, or it's again, we just have excuses. You know, I can provide David with 20 excuses if we haven't achieved a certain budget result because oh, this is here, this is here, and we don't want to be in that, that particular position. But I think the starting point is really the budget. If we want to budget, we can budget certain quantities of the data. We can budget how many sessions we have. You know, we've provided additional information since I've, since I've come into being. These reports were a mess. You know, we have, we, for example, had income where we had hiring for next year. We were recognizing the revenue when we received it. We don't do that anymore. When we have events, we don't, if, if the event happens next month, the income doesn't get put into the income state, into the into these accounts this month, it gets put in next month. So we've done a whole lot of improvements to that, so we have a little bit more accurate figure. But you know, when you look at it, is the audit book something that we should be monitoring? You know, we've been providing that information. That's the key thing. If we've got a whole if we've got ten thousand pounds worth of bookings, is that the key factor that we should? Should it be twenty thousand, should it be thirty thousand? And I think that's some of the things that, that, that we try to put the emphasis on. But at the end of the day, you've got to go back to what you want to budget, and we can budget at all the detail we want, and then we can build it back up into the traditional budget, and you can have a little bit more qualitative type data. Like I said, you know, what is the sales per staff member for each hour that the bar's open? We have that data. It's not a financial data, but it's an operational data. What is the, you know, the average weekly sales per hour being open of the tea room? You know, and we can build up any budget based on that type of data, and then present it. You know, it'll be Part of it will be sitting in person, now, part of it will be somewhere else. But we know if our sales are that amount and our cost of sales are that amount, then we we on target if, we, if that's what we budgeted. Except a point on, on the budget, Alan, because I think if you, if you try and change anything midway through a year, it, it is a bit confusing and always, always a catch up mode. And I'm also conscious that we are only one committee, and if we are looking to change it, then we need to make sure that all other committees row in with the, the, the rationale that we, we would take. Um, as a bean counter myself, I do understand the, the work involved and the, the, the extra angst that, that gives people to, to allocate this. And then, well, actually, then you end up going reiterating three or four times because you're right. Somebody will say, well, that is in my department. Only half of that person was there or, or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, I accept where we've got specific costs, such as the, the, the rates, but even that, we will have some element of it for the office-based facility upstairs. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's not a, a simple fix uh, to, to understand this, but I think within, you know, the, the Finance Committee as well, we, we can't do this on our own. Uh, if, if any amendments need to be made. But I think, uh, you know, I understand Terry's point where he's coming from about the the profitability of, of, a, of a venue um, because the hidden cost, and the biggest one, is staffing. Um, you know, on face value, we may have made a contribution towards staffing, but if we don't know what that staffing is, then we could lull ourselves into the false sense of security saying, oh, we're making 10 grand on this, but actually, you know, it's costing us 20 to staff it. But that doesn't mean, as a council, we're going to shut you down. It means that we need to be aware of how much the service is costing us to provide. Because as a community venue, it is our only community venue of, of any size in the town centre. 
And so, you know, I think everybody would be willing to um, want to provide that as a community facility. But at the same time, we do need to be mindful of the cost of providing it and to be able to defend it. Because, you know, if somebody said, it's going to cost you 20000 a year to provide a venue that can be used by all, then we'd probably say, well, that, you know, it's a necessary evil because we want to have that facility open and available. Um, but you know, at the moment, we're not able to, to give that because we haven't got a feel for it. Now, I don't know whether it's just a, an allocated cost that we put as a footnote to say you know, staffing costs to run this venue is X per month. Uh, would give us a better handle on it, um, but I, I'm really, you know, mindful that we do need to make sure other committees take the same basis, um, and we don't want to create you extra work, Alan, because you know, as you say, you, you're down one member, and I do appreciate the changes that you have made and the the catch up you've made. You know, the, the putting the income in the right period is something that has never really sat comfortably with me, but now that you're you know, putting it in the right period, I think is great because you do get a measure for the activity that's happening um, there. So I don't think we're going to resolve this today. Um, but what I would like to do is to maybe have a chat with finance uh, and, and so to see if there are areas where we can either fine tune it a little, um, not create too much more work for you. But even if there is um, a footnote to say, you know, salary cost for the year, are running at X amount that we then get a, an idea of the annual running costs of, of the venue. Um, is that acceptable to the committee if we go have a chat with yourself? I'm, I'm quite happy to go sit down with you and Jane and that. Jane. Um, well, what, what you're saying then is have an overall budget breakdown of the request that Councillor Jeremy's mentioned. Um, what will you do that once a year? So after that year, you turn around and say, this venue's pulled in this amount of money. Well, I, I think we need to have the chat to see what can be delivered with the least effort so that we uh, can get a, a manageable. Yeah, because I think, I think now that things are being delved into the, that haven't been delved in before, I mean, the rents and that, surely that should come through a different finance committee. Um, I don't know. The I, rates, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and staffing is the personnel thing, uh, costing of staffing is the personnel. So I think everything's being brought into one committee as such. I can understand where it's coming from, uh, believe it or not. Um, but I think we're overcrossing things now that should be done by them certain committees, i.e. the personnel one. The staff is done by um, the personnel and... The other one should be done by. I don't want to take that away from them. I think it's just merely giving us a um, annual running cost in relation to the venues so that we are aware of what we're delivering. Brenda. When I look at the staffing cost overall, that is, that's within their working hours. So I, I, I ignore that because that's what they get paid per hour. And, you know, it, I don't know, Tom work Monday, but he don't work Tuesday because he he done some work on Sunday. So that's not been on there. I just think it's the sessional staff that um, perhaps because it's, see, that's, a, that, that, that's another problem because sessional staff don't just work in the Carnegie. That, I mean, we've had sessional staff go in the gardens to, to pick things up out the shed. So that, that's your problem is if sessional staff is used on events, then, you know, if venues have got the um, costings for them, at least you know what the cost are. Because you'll know what the overall salary is for the council workers, but you don't know the overall salary of what you've paid for the um, sessional workers. So perhaps that's the starting point. I don't know. Terry, you want to comment? Yeah, um, uh, I'm happy with your proposed approach, Chair. I think that's sensible. Um, I'm perhaps a little bit old school because, you know, I've been a councillor for a while uh, and we always used to get um, costing specific to uh, the committee. So, you know, I've been on uh, the 
predecessor to what was Guildhall and Carnegie uh, in the past, and things like rates and staff costs were reported at the same time as the other costs. They've since been merged in together, and I can understand the rationale for that from a time point of view. But our job as councillors is to look at uh, income and expenditure and come to a conclusion about value for money um, and to make changes or suggest changes where necessary and that sort of thing. And that's why I'm sort of probing this point. We started off looking at profit or asking for profit and loss in relation to the guilt or tea rooms because we've created a new entity there. And I think it's important that we are aware as a committee if a profit is being made, if not, what we need to do to make it a profit. And actually, because we want it to be sustainable, we want the things that we set up, the guilt or the Carnegie, the tea rooms, to be sustainable, and therefore the financing of them uh, is crucial. But um, uh, I'm happy to, to leave it there for now. And, um, uh, you know, the point's been made and we can you know, take it forward. Okay. Right, Q, what's coming? Well, I'm, I'm going to be repetitious. I really think this is a very, very important issue. Um, my basic job as a councillor, it seems to me, is to make decisions. And a lot of those decisions are made about other people's money and how I'm going to spend it. And I think I need to be able to justify that to other people. And the case of the Guild War II Tea Room is a nice, simple example of where the information needs to be available. So I need to know how much we've spent and how much we've raised. And if the figure... If, if a significant figure is being spent on staffing and not including in that, somehow I need to access that information. Otherwise, any decision I make is totally pointless. I, I, I can't see how I can say to myself, no, oh, look, we're making a nice profit of £689. Well done, everybody. If, in fact, the staffing is way over that, but not included. I really think that is absolutely vital. So I can only stress how important I think this discussion is. Finally, before I shut up, Alan, I've got a brief a request for information. On the blue column on the document, am I right to say that we don't include pluses and minuses, but we could do, just to make it clearer? They are minuses in them on the so I, left down the green column. Yeah, I understand. I'm looking in the wrong place. That's very helpful. Thank you. I think my sight is not as good as it was. Now, Alan, did you want to come back then, Jen? Yes. I, I think, yeah, I mean, just the comments that you raised, or the, we, you know, there's a whole lot of questions that come from that. I mean, we have to have the guild open, open at a certain period of time. So we have to have, if we to have the doors open, we have to have the staff member there. Now, at the moment, the girl, the, the tea room staff member is actually also our caretaker of that part of the thing. So we, you know, what part of the cost of the, of the tea room gets allocated to that? Is there the caretaking part of it? Is that 20 percent, 50 percent? And this is the game, that, the, the part of the difficulty that we have is that, and then the other thing is that we're using the, the tea room to do more internal catering. Now, we don't charge ourselves for money. You know, if, if I go and have a lot of committee meeting and the team room do certain things for that, well, that's it. You know, the, the costs are all in this, this particular department. We don't charge each other because there's VAT implications for doing that and we are making text digital and, and all those challenges. So, again, it's quite difficult. And, again, we've got to understand what we're trying to achieve out of it. You know, if you want to know, you know, everything emanates from sales and cost of sales. You know, if those figures aren't right, then... Doesn't matter what cost you allocate, you're actually not doing very well. And what is a, what is a, 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 an acceptable sales figure? What is an acceptable cost of sales? And that drives your profitability. You know, it's your GB percent should be fifty percent, but it's also the quantum of the gross profit because you can make hundred percent gross profit on one, you know, on two pounds of sales, but you've only got one pound to, to fund your overheads. So it's just a matter of understanding, and this is why it's a little bit difficult, you know, and this is why you go back to the budgeting process and you build up your budget from activities and then you can freeze it. And then once a quarter, you know, David and his report can report against some of those operational quantitative things that un underpin those, the, the, um, those drivers. Sales is dependent on how, how you know, half you open and what hours you open and what your sales are per minute or per, per hour or per whatever the case may be. And that drives it. But it is quite, you know, just a simple thing of saying, what is the staff cost for the tea room? What's the element of caretaking? And that's what we'd have to take into account. And we have the same problem in the, in the, in the Carnegie. You know? um, but I think the other thing that's really is that within this budget, within the activities, 
you know, running the market is a community, you know, is it, is it a commercial activity? I would say it's not, because otherwise we close down the market because it doesn't make any 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 profit. Running the box office, running doing the media, doing the, the, the marketing, they're all non-commercial activities. So the first thing we have to do is split up what's commercial and what's not commercial, because the non-commercial will be funding from the, the, the precept, and hopefully the commercial will be funding from from the income that generates a little bit of the multiplier effect. So, so again, more questions than... Yeah, we're not going to solve it today, Alan. I think we, we need to you know, have another chat and uh, you know, see what is feasible to give us a, a guide to some of the information that we're after. Jenny, you want to come in? I was just going to say that it seems that the tea, tea rooms are being uh, highlighted more than anything else. Um, there's one member of staff in the tea rooms that works. She's a she's not a sessional uh, so, No, this is this is so part, part, this part is, of the this is what I'm yeah. saying, David, is there's one member of staff that does the tea rooms who also does, as Alan's quite rightly said, does the caretaking of the other parts of the building, looks after the building. We've got um I'm not sure what M, M the other lady is, um, but I know she goes out and does the market sorts the markets out and that. So, I mean, is she a safe session or is she... Well, currently, Emma is on a, on a 20 hour contract. Well, so is, so that includes good. market supervision. It includes caretaking. It includes bar uh, services. So she's, kind of she's, she's an employed member of staff. So we've got two as such for the tea rooms. One that does all the catering and everything herself and is caretaker of the guild hall. The other one comes in when, well, obviously once you've got to have camera. I can't see that. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with Alan here. How can you how can you sit and say two members of staff? We want to know exactly what they earn, what they're doing, how much do they get paid? Is this if this is what is coming across to me? Is how much do they get paid for doing that? How much do they get paid for doing that? And how much? Uh, you, you know, you you just dig in a big hole. I think yes, we have the right to know, but there's certain times to do it. I think you're going into a Treading on personnel and finances. Okay. David, did you want to come back? I, 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 Mike. 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 I don't expect when I come to a meeting to have the last penny to use uh, the old currency that you, Terry's gone back to. Very loyal to the <laughs> government. Um, but it would be an enormous help to be able to, to know that, for example, the tea room is open for X hours a week, so many weeks in the year, and the basic cost of the member of staff who is there effectively all the time, um, if I'm wrong, that needs putting into the calculation, as a starter. It still ignores the, the fact that David's putting furniture out and that someone's cleaning and someone's locking up and so on. But, but we're that much closer. So I'm getting to the point where I feel I can make a decision that's based on facts and not sheer guesswork or, oh, well, I like the tea room, so I'll vote for it anyway, which I do. But I'm... Uh, you know, I want I want something that brings me a bit closer to the real cost than we've got at the moment. I'm going to park that there. I think. Can, we, I, can I just have a last say? Sorry. Uh, so so um, I'm I'm looking squarely at Alan here, um, and and again, this is something that is being asked on on uh, on quite a regular occasion. And I and actually, I take um, both Terry and uh, and Mike's point. If we're going to look at the tea room, we we opened the tea room uh, coming out of COVID, sort of end of September, early October, and actually, you know, it is a town council business venture with a small b, um, and we do need to look at it in terms of a business sense. So we do need to evaluate whether whether it's uh, it's likely to be profitable. If it is, then what do we need to do? Do we need to actually maximise that more fully and open more often? Uh, and if we do, how much is that going to cost? That kind of thing. So maybe, um, but I think if you want to get it into a structure, we need to we need to develop the format through our budget setting period. In in the interim, um, we could adopt something that you uh, you sort of uh, touched on, Alan, and that's maybe once a quarter we look at certain areas of the business i mean the business rates are not going to change the, the rates are an annual um uh, cost and they're not going to change we just need to flag it up and tell people what it is um but we can look at say the tea room in isolation and try and do a more of an evaluation across that 
And then maybe when we come into September, October, November, which is our budget setting period, we can look at a different structure going forward. So, so I don't know whether that's acceptable. Yeah, I think you know the, the point of changing things midway through the year is not great, and it does cause a lot of work. And I think you also got to bear in mind the other committees about how they want to report. So I don't think we have to do anything in isolation. I think we've got to try and do it. And that's why if you're happy. I would rather sit down with Alan and just chat through things. What we see as a feasible, yeah, halfway house, shall we say, but but would give comfort to those who, who require further information. But I, I, th I don't think we're going to get any further today. And I'd sooner come back next month after I've had a chat with Alan. That's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. Um, so if nothing on the financial side. Okay, thanks, Alan. Yeah. We'll go on to our marketing report 102.22. So, we... so can I, before so, you guys yeah. delve in, can I just, um, because uh, we have Hazel sitting at the table. Yes, uh, welcome, Hazel. Hazel. Yeah, Hazel, <laughs> Hazel's um, one of the, the, the latest recruits, as you know. Um, Chris uh, Crimmon, our Minute Secretary, retired. Uh, Karen um, got a... Uh, well, I'm not sure whether I should say promotion, <laughs> <laughs> but she was um, she was moved into a different uh, a different area of the council business, and we took on uh, Hazel. And in, in a short period of time, only five or six weeks, we actually have re-evaluated her job. When, when we advertised it, it was a receptionist stroke admin, uh, but she is now part of this team. And um, we've got a greater focus on uh, social media and, and marketing and things like that, that we, we lay on the desk of, of Hazel's. And she's, um, she's taken it with uh, a real high degree of relish and we are seeing the improvements. So we've actually retitled her job as an engagement officer because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to engage with more people through our marketing and, and communications and, uh, and Hazel will be a critical point of that. So. Personally, you know, well done for the first five weeks, Hazel, and uh, I'm now going to throw you right into the final. <laughs> so, is it a <laughs> deadly <laughs> duo? So, before I get started, I just want to make sure everyone's received one of our packs. Yes. I don't know, because I don't know exactly who's responded to it, but um, if I get in a pack, but we figured we'd cut out the middleman and we'd bring some down ahead of time. Yeah. So, everyone's got. The upcoming events poster, which we do every other month, and you can see it around the town. And there's also a bunch of flyers for uh, upcoming events as well. So we've got all of those. Should anyone wish for information off you? So first things first, the returns. Obviously, I mention every month, but it's something that you spent a long time discussing in past years. So the rotunda is, you know, still being updated. We're still getting uh, posters coming, and to be honest, we got the uh, we got some boards made that would fill it when there was nothing to go there and those are redundant because there's always something to go in there um and we get plenty of third party posters come through as well so about i believe it's three or four of the ten panels are now dedicated almost entirely to the stuff in third parties as in people outside of the car media or not being run not events being run by us um, something that here's was predominantly done has been reformat reformatting the way that the social media platforms are used. So, for example, uh, anyone who uses Instagram would have noticed that it is now a great deal more active than it used to be. Again, thank you to Hazel. Uh, we now have three separate accounts because, as pointed out, we had just one Instagram account for everything and it ended up being, everything being a little bit messy. So, we ended up separating everything into the tea room, town council, and the cunning guild or complex on Instagram, means that everything. Goes so basically everything allocates to the same Facebook page it's got. So it, it, everything's in its own channels, makes things a lot tidier in the grand scheme. Uh, this also allows us to get a better breakdown of our reach and the amount of interactions we're getting, not as well as just reach as well. Um, it enables us to cross post to other things. So, for example, say there's something that's important, say there's an event happening in the tea room. Uh, we're able to obviously post on the team, but we can then also share that to the council page. So, for example, what I believe we did with the civic reception. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so, so that, that's, that's a good example of stuff being shared across the world, whatever areas. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully being able to highlight the two rooms again, you know, that was a bit of a hot topic earlier, but uh, being able to push social media for the team that would means that we would be able to increase the footfall for that, you know, using hashtags and suggested posts, which is something that Hayes has been looking into and maybe something I was a bit lost on. 
Um, uh, along with that, of course, with Hayes joining, the amount of posts that are made on the social media have increased massively, and generally the organisation of our marketing has gotten a lot better. And so a lot, of, a lot more stuff is getting out there that, than it was previously, which is never a bad thing. Um, you do have to make sure not to post too much, otherwise it ends up being a bit of white noise, but I think it's too much coming out so far. Um, we also have uh, weekly, <coughs> weekly meetings with the venues and events team. And what that does is that allows us to plan things ahead of time. Of course, you know, they will bring up certain points or we'll say we want to advertise this this week and you can then work it into the schedule and make sure the public schedule to go up at the right times. <laughs> so we're also exploring options with, uh, with you know, wider with our social media pages to market into multiple formats. Um, what we've done is we've built a connection with a local community member who does advertise all around the town. Uh, we basically, we help them out a little bit and in return that they will be taking some of our posters to these locations. So it means that more than just our areas our in the town centre, we'll be getting advertising put elsewhere in the town where it, all, all these different community centres and such that they visit. Uh, and their, their target audience is an older audience, which means that we're obviously getting a lot of people who won't use social media that much. Um, on that same, uh, <laughs> yes, like you don't. <laughs> yeah. um, they, they'll be getting the packs as well, similar to these. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll be able to give them a pack of 20 or so of the upcoming events posters. So, because there is around 20 locations that we go to around mm -hmm. the time. So, it's a good start, and we can obviously improve on that as well. But it's a great position to start from. Uh, to look at the monthly observations, because uh, obviously we've mentioned the frequency of events going up, which does mean that the amount of uh, reach that the data shows us is a massive improvement. Uh, you can see it says plus 600% there. That does not mean that 600 more people are viewing those particular posts, but it does mean that there are that there is more people viewing them and also way more posts going out. It's like a multiplier, um, which, you know, but it still makes everything look very nice. And you can see... You can sort of see where he's appearing because something it all goes up. <laughs> um, that will not yet. Yeah, yeah, and the Instagram actually existing, which means that yeah, that that's uh, that's gone up huge. Um, that will not that upward trend will not continue at that speed as much as it would be nice for it to continue at that speed. But this is more. This is is going up and it will start to plateau. Not entirely, but it will it will stop improving at that speed. Um, that being said. Um, and uh, actually, you know, we've missed the point with campaigns. But so, uh, in other, in, in, along with you know the frequency, we've also been putting together little campaigns. So, saying seven days left, six days left, you know, and showing what is coming up, and that allows people to basically say that you know they've seen it because they've had so many more opportunities to see it. You're basically making the holes in the net a lot thinner for people to miss the uh, miss things being posted. But with the monthly observations, uh, I don't know if anyone else has seen the marketing report. We I know it got sent out a couple of days ago. But uh, we had our most viewed post ever by a significant margin, uh, which was the one about the the fly pass. Now, of course, the fly pass didn't actually end up happening as we wanted it to. That's not our fault. But it was put together a very good post, and it ended up being seen by 82,000 people. Um, I don't know anyone knows, but that's over double the population of the town, so it shows how far you can reach. Uh, and that, well, that includes the fact that some posts were not we're you know no longer available so it may have been higher than that and uh and the fact that the post was so good it got copied by other locations oh wonderful uh, not shares though so we didn't actually we didn't get to see the data on that but it means that you know you, you know if people you know it was a bit isn't it um uh copying is a sincere for flattery or something like that I mean, that's definitely the wrong phrase but it's close enough <laughs> imitation that's the one so that is by a result of that having a massive increase, and that yes, that is where the spike is on all of those things. Mm -hmm. you ask. Uh, the that has allowed a lot more people to see our page and become a follower. So we ended up seeing a big jump in the number of followers for the event as well. And uh, it gained. I mean, this is not just the interaction, but there was over five hundred reactions and two hundred comments on that post as well. So it shows that there's a lot of engagement with the post, and the reach is anything beyond. It's beyond the town because there's, like I said, double the actual town's population saw that, and that's not including anyone who was either too old for social media or too young for social media. So that's 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 pretty good going. Um, we've had multiple sellout events as well, such as the Size of the Weekend, which was a successful event, and had a great social media campaign as well, so it shows that it works. Uh, the jury's at Drag Night, which sold that in the Guild Hall as well. 
there's a second drag night booked in which is doing well as well so a lot of our events are selling well and that's from what i know from other venues that's actually a rarity so we're doing quite well on that front um again as we've pointed out there's you know when you see the massive upward trend in, in our in posting that, oh yeah just a real quick the amount of reach was over ten thousand people interacted with the post so it's not just people scrolling past and seeing it it's people who are you know stop to click on the picture like click to like may left a comment etc over ten thousand people so that may well have been basically the entire population death if you were on facebook uh, yeah so yeah increasing profile visits thanks to stuff like that the a number of visits on the town council facebook profile over the month is over one hundred thousand, which again mostly hence that post but there's a lot of good posts doing as well and because of the use of campaigns and the general increase in followers, we're able to we're able to uh, make sure that our our events, anything we're doing, any good things that the council is doing. So it's not just the venues and events, but any any marketing of the town uh, is seen by a much wider group of people than before. I really need to breathe between my points. Now. <laughs> um, other than that, we are. We have uh, also using partnered events to work with other businesses or high risk venues and helping with advertising things. So I believe beyond that on the report is showing all the data, which has hopefully been appearing up there if in case people didn't get a print off themselves. But there's there's a lot of data and again showed massive spike in the middle thanks to one particularly one particularly big post that got received well as well as a general increase in frequency of posts and how many people are viewing them. That was a lot longer than usual. But Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm crazy about the snail mail um, How often do we make sure these posts are up to date? I happen to be um, utilising the uh, Guildhall laboratories the other day, and the posters in there, all the stuff on them are gone, finished. If you mean the biometric post, which is the big green one that's on the back of your pack. That is done. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that this. If you go there now, you will find that it is the current one now. Yeah. Um, and what what happens is bi monthly, we change the post over. So, for example, the previous one would have been, I believe, that would have been April to June. Mm -hmm. And so when so when it gets to the end of the second you month, you change that, it. Then. We didn't change it then. But the smaller ones we had in there for particular things. I think it was in there. They were, they 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 were um, things that had already passed, and that's you know. Is that in the guild or the Carnegie? Uh, uh, I think that's the Carnegie. Right. Well, oh, we just need to keep that. Yeah. <laughs> we need yeah, to keep. No, that. You know, just so if, which when you're hanging around the loo, you yeah. have to have something to do, don't you? <laughs> Read a post. Really, I need to hand the loo. Uh, <laughs> so you ask all. the post get updated weekly. In the, we could, uh, yes. but if, that, if that was the that was the question, I think I missed it. Yeah, I think it is, yes. Um, but yeah, no, they are done weekly, and it's not always the same day. It would be lovely if I could do it first thing, no, first thing every Monday. I think but, um, you're both doing an excellent job. Terry, then Brenda. Yeah, um, thank you, Tom. Really useful report. Um, very pleased to see the um, increased level of communication lately because. Um, uh, things sort of have bounced back somewhat since COVID, and it's nice to see the rotunda so full that we don't need the other stuff now, which is uh, brilliant, uh, frankly. Um, obviously, very pleased that we're sharing uh, not just our own stuff on social media, but I've really enjoyed the sort of citizens' advice or Norfolk County Council road work. You know, it's fairly mundane some of it, but actually, it's really useful to to sort of you know day to day people. Um, and thank you for sharing the front garden competition. And a particular thank you to Hazel, because I think it's yourself that does the direct responses to people, which is, you know, adds a personal touch. Mm -hmm. um, when I got a, a response back, it suddenly jumped out at me that on the signature of our town council emails, um, we don't at the moment have a link for people to sign up to our digital newsletter, because we are still doing it. I think I saw reference to it in the report. Um, and I, I mean, I'm not sure from a GDPR point of view, we can automatically lift people's emails and pop them onto the mailing list. No, I didn't think so. But we can certainly put it on the signatures so that when we write to them, they can see, oh, look, there's an actual email yeah. mailing list. Please click here to sign up type thing. That might be useful. Um, so just from my response to that one, <laughs> that's fine. But um, the only thing was it was just keeping it was whether or not we merged the Carnegie events 
with Sector Town Council. Right. Because obviously, if you send any, if I send anyone an email from Mail currently, we are yeah. looking at changing the system. Um, it comes from my email, so, right. so you would receive a response from me with yeah. my tag on it. Um, and it's whether or not we can use that platform to send out the newsletter to town council people who are asking about their bin collections of things or whether we need to look at a system where it comes from mail or it comes from me depending on that but yeah. just like i can look at mm -hmm. it so. I, yeah, I, I, I think what terry suggested is a good point but what i and i understand where hazel is coming from we don't want to cloud um whereas the town council is very much that informative sort of statutory stuff and the other is more events we don't really want to you know, um, lose the focus. But what we could do on the sign off is give them both options. Yeah. So, yeah, I, think, I think we still will, will, will look at that. Yeah. Terry, have you finished? Yeah. yeah. So, Brenda, please. Yeah, well, I've just got a suggestion really. Um, apply to Staniford because I'm looking at the weather, it's not very nice. But as the weather gets nice, you do get a lot of people coming into the gardens. So, if you ask Sunny for if you can put some posters up in the greenhouse, because people will, you know, stop and have a look at things that are there. Yeah. But obviously, it's asking permission. But I'll leave that to you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, it's mentioned there as a request, and I think you know that's a you know, brain, especially with the state of the greenhouse inside. You're not actually missing out on anything that's in there. So no, I think not, you, know, you could yeah, put a few. Probably town wide ones rather than specific or well, ones that are relevant if, if you're a user of the gardens, then if there's something on the gardens, obviously lends itself to yeah. being there. Um, but don't. I, I think one of the other things that, um, that Hazel did uh, recently was when we had the, the obvious um, mentions on, on social media is, uh, was that, oh, I didn't know that event was on. And what, what Hazel's done is done a sort of a generic uh, reply to that, which is, well, don't miss out next time, sign up to our e-newsletter. The problem with social media is if there's a lot of traffic on it, it loses it loses its sort of window. Um, but if you if you answer with that little uh, link to, well, don't miss out next time, sign here and you'll you'll find out about everything. That was a that was a good move. And we are benefited by that, actually. So well done, Hazel. Yeah. So if I may get yep. something real quickly. Um, it's not included on here because I did it after the marker and report was done. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the, I have recently rechecked the numbers on the amount of people signed up for our newsletter, and it's about 20% higher than it was last month. Now, merely that is because at the end of the month, I will add it in bulk, but I just sort of suddenly realised that after the uh, after the Jubilee and everything that we've had coming up, we've had a lot more people sign up for our newsletter. So yeah. proof that that's working. That was, was, was a good question I was going to have because I'm very conscious of building that. Dennis. Yeah. Um, showing my lack of knowledge, how would I get to this newsletter? What kind of place would I have to go to find it? What, the hard copy or just signing up? For well, it? both, but the, signing up for it, I was thinking about I actually doing something. Well, I think honest. anybody in the tech heads would probably respond to you and sign you up, but obviously, the team here will be, you know. So it's not a printed off newsletter. It is an email newsletter. Yeah. The good news is, then, is you don't need to sign up because the signed up a year and a half ago. Oh, <laughs> right. so, where, so where, where would I find it then? In your emails. In your emails. Email every I email every right. day. Well, I did go through my emails, but uh, yeah. obviously, if it's not to related to literature, I don't look at it. I should look at it now. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very good because I'm, I'm able to, uh, with the news that, as I've mentioned in previous reports, obviously, it's not in, it's not in this one, but uh, in previous reports, I've mentioned how many people have been able to open it. So I'm able to see everyone who's opened the email, everyone who's read it, um, so on. So it's like, it's like a Santa Claus situation. I'm like, well, I know when it's. Uh, I definitely need to do it for soon and like right today. But yeah, it's yeah. very, I'm able to okay, see exactly who's you. viewing it. And uh, if it's about failing yeah. that, I believe last month after the last event meeting, I, we did send an email out to everyone with a direct link to it. So right. but the, the purpose of that was for councillors to be able to share that with anyone who was interested. Yeah. But of course, you are able to sign up through the themselves as well. No, sure. Because, sure. for example, I put it on your councillor email, but I don't know your personal email. So if you wanted it to come through there instead, just say that you know this popped up on the on the Facebook page and I thought that was really great that you know, got in one document there a quick window of what's coming up yeah. um, and, and that's great that we can you know carry that that on for you. We say we've not got any hard copies. Is there a possibility of having a few hard copies at the venues so that if you do have an event, people take it away because sometimes they're always sitting there. 
uh, like half time and just have to scroll through rather than uh, David. So if you just pick up that, that leaflet there. So what we're planning to do as part and just to um, bring you up to speed on going back to some of the action points, it says uh, whether we can um, further utilise some of the other outlets like uh, doctor surgeries, retail outlets, et cetera, et cetera. What we're also planning to do is pre-COVID, um, when we had Joe uh, on, on staff with us, uh, both he and Tom uh, toured the, uh, the town and asked various different outlets, hairdressers, nail bars, et cetera, if we gave them a little sort of plastic dispenser, could we put some leaflets in, uh, in the dispenser? Um, and we had a great response to that and then of course everything fell apart what we have now is much more individual events and that's not going to be feasible to put on someone's nail bar counter but what we can do is create sort of a five versions of this but also on the back have a lot more information about signing up to the newsletter blah 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 all that kind of stuff uh, so uh, hazel and tom are now going to um further those uh, links again and they will be asking I know thank you very much for those councillors that have come back and said that they'll go out to their contacts but we're going to go back out to that list of contacts again and, and ask them uh, to do that so that's where we are with that action point in terms of the relocation of the old notice board that used to be in the entrance uh, porch of the guild hall uh, we are um, in the next uh, couple of weeks uh, going to get that repositioned on the outer uh, area of the steps uh, by the guild hall so it will be more visible and accessible and uh, more people are sort of you know we're now starting to use the outside area so people will be able to see those posters in, in that space and so um yeah so that just touches on those two action points yeah okay thank you mike thank you um i think yesterday i as usual, sat having a coffee in the middle of town, and I lost 25 minutes of my life because coming to the next week was a man who got nothing good to say about the Town Council. Um, he didn't know I was a councillor, he didn't know me. Uh, and most of his grief was about communication. Now, I think we've made a big effort recently and we've improved, and we've been talking about it just now. But I would express the concern that sometimes in a conversation, what matters is not what you say, it's what the other person hears, which may not be what you thought you said. So they may hear less of part of what you said, they may not understand what you said, they may, in, in, in their mind, they may do, go off on the tangent because you find them in some way. Now, my concern is that, is this. Have we at any time attempted to ask the public whether they think our communications are good, satisfactory, brilliant, tell them what they need to know? And would it be worth me or us or someone just spending a little time doing what I do anyway, which is sitting in the street drinking coffee, talking to people, saying what we think about communication? Because I sometimes think that we, we, we are working hard on it and we have improved. Are the public now better informed in their opinion? And I think it's really important that we do try and get their opinion, not our opinion. Okay. So during the Jubilee weekend, there was a couple of individuals that came up to me. Uh, I was um, whether it was because I was serving prosecco to, uh, <laughs> to people, and uh, there were members of the public wanted a glass, which I promptly let them hump by the way um but uh, uh he actually said to me this gentleman and said um you're not really doing much are you and i said well we are doing quite a bit um but what do you mean by not too much he said well i don't think you're doing anything oh okay so he said well i've not seen anything advertised so i ask people when they say that now mike is where do you look to get your information and this gentleman gave me two options he said don't tell me about Facebook or social media because I don't use it. No. I read the magazine, the About Thetford, and I said, have you still got the magazine? So he said, yes. I said, well, look at the magazine when you get home because there's a nice little. Uh, so he said, well, a, a piddly little advert. Have you put a piddly little advert in? No, we haven't. We haven't actually. We've, they, they have picked up the information and gone across the top of both pages. I, he also said, but I like traditional posters. And I said, well, when you came to the marketplace, which route did you take? Well, what do you mean? Well, did you come up the high street? Yes. And I said, well, there's a thing that we call the rotunda just by St. Cuthbert's Church, which is which has all the posters in. 
I don't don't know what you're talking about. But when you go to the bottom of the marketplace, look left, and you'll see. So it's very difficult, and I, and and there are times when I've heard stories before about people saying there's nothing that goes on in this town, and they're standing under a massive banner across the high street. It is very difficult. But the thing is, you're right, Mike. Instead of trying to justify it, ask the question, where would you look? And then we need to try and address those things. And if people tell us this is where they're going to look more often than not, then we need to put it in this marketing campaign list. Um, I think we're covering lots of the bases now and things are improving, but clearly there's always room for continual improvement. So I think we should do that. I think Hazel's got a comment on this. Yeah. So obviously I am on the ground and I am sending the posts out on social media. I'm putting the posters up or sending, you know, working with Tom to put posters up. From my perspective, we are doing a lot. Obviously, I would say that because I'm the person behind it. But my, we have identified that actually there is this demographic that do not use social media. We are trying to build links through various um, partnerships with people. Um, I am tagging, obviously, any of the events we have, we're tagging the um, hire as well in the post. So you can tag them and they share it instantly to their page and things like that. But obviously, I do understand that there is this group that we are potentially missing. Um, but it, if you put a thing out that says, are we doing well? Are we brilliant? Are we, you know, one to 10? Mm -hmm. It's fair enough. But what we need is constructive feedback on that. So we need to word it in a way, if we are going to do something that says, actually, like David said, I need to look, I look here and there isn't anything, or I would expect to see it here or something like that, because you're going to get sliding scale. You're going to get people going, yeah, it's excellent. Well, no, it's not. But then that's not anything we can, it, it's like, you know, the data that um, Alan was talking about previously, we need something that we can then adapt and improve on. Um, with suggestions rather than just yes or no. Well, I think they're on the case because you're absolutely right, it's a demographic, and you're absolutely right that it's those who do not use social media. That's where the issue lies. The trouble is, they also happen to be the people who, in many cases, have got time to do things. And so, in a way, they're quite an important demographic. I'm thinking, the guy I suppose yesterday was 60. Um, it's probably those who are sort of 55 plus of the sort. Um, or some of them, and they may many of them have time because they're retired, so they are one of the groups who may do things. So. Okay, Tom, you want to come in? Yeah, yeah. so I just want to follow up a little bit more on what Hazel said, as well as your initial point about doing a survey of some sort. Um, that could work, however, men to, to particularly mention the how do they think our communication is? That would be a, uh, in my opinion, that would that would be a uh, that would be a pretty dire idea. Uh, reason being, and there's a phenomenon behind it called the survival bias phenomenon, which is uh, basically we're going to go on a little bit of a tangent, but basically they did a little bit of a study on World War II planes when they came back, and basically where a plane is most likely to be shot, and they showed it's likely to be in certain places around the wings, and it showed that it was never the engines, and that's because the planes that got shot in the engines didn't make it back to get surveyed. So the reason that makes mm -hmm. sense is that people who are going to fill out this survey are not going to be people who are happy seeing with what we currently advertise. Yeah, the, the people who are already seeing all of us are not going to have anything to say on that front because they're already seeing in the places that they frequent, whether it be social media or the Rotunda or any other notice boards. So to say how good do you think it is, that would be something to avoid, but you could easily have, you know, councils are willing to do so, have a thing where they basically, you know, take locations of people where they think they would be most likely to see something. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I got Terry, then Brendan. Yeah, um, Tom's absolutely right, because um, if you put a survey on Facebook about communication, the people that are on Facebook will, will answer in the simplest form. Um, and that's why it's good to do a number of um, different ways of engaging with people, whether that's, you know, printed questionnaires or face-to-face -face meetings at residence groups, that sort of thing. Um, but also to record how you are getting that response from somebody, so if it's digital or if it's online. Um, uh, just a note on demographics, I think it's wrong to assume that it's only older people not on social media. You know, a lot of people that work, frankly, are busy at work during the week and don't have time to sit looking at Facebook, frankly. Uh, so you can miss stuff, because often most of our posts, I'm not sure we do schedule posts. So I currently schedule posts, and what I was looking at is, so we have a peak. You can, you can look at all the insights on, as you probably wrote, on social media, and you can look at, there is a peak where certain people um, 
visit our site and it shows you on social media and what I've been looking at obviously we've had a very busy few weeks <laughs> running up but looking forward what I'm looking at is scheduling posts to go out at seven o'clock at night or six in the morning because actually it, it's times like that that people do pick up on it yeah um, good I'm so, really pleased to hear that because I, I don't think historically we have scheduled posts and most of our staff tend to work during the day when everyone else is at work so if we are now scheduling stuff for a variety of times I think that's a you know that's a real improvement um and there was another point I was going to make but I can't remember what it was no, you'll come to me in a minute, Brenda. You then finish. Well, I'm sorry to say that Terry nicked my thunder because I was going to say the same thing. It's like, um, I'll, get, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, every time you phone the Housing Association up, whether it's paying your rent or, you know, just literally anything, as soon as I put that phone down, um, the, you get a ping. Mm. How, did we, how did we treat you today? Marks out five, you know. Um, if you had any problems, what was they? And they only give you a small box to write. Was you satisfied in the end? That's it. You know, there, there was very brief questions. And I'm thinking, but how do they guide all them people that don't do emails and all this? You know, so it's a question I'm going to ask them, actually, because I feel that's, it's quite interesting. Because it's every time you felt... I, I just put on money pound my rent, you know. But it, they ask you every time. Dennis. Um, well, I'm just basically saying, going back to the basics, um, if if we do come up with some sort of form of question that we want to ask the public and everything, I'd be quite willing to sit under a gazebo out there and, and do it. But the main question is, how do we publicise that you're there under that? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's, 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 actually, that's actually a good thing, because in hindsight, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, we had, we had a couple of events which did attract, you know, a few hundred people on each occasion. And one thing we didn't do is we didn't use that opportunity to say exactly this. Yeah. I know, and and we do need to have this as one of our top focuses, and hope hopefully um, Hazel will be, you know, that person that will say, look, we've got this event, we're running around trying to, um, you know, make the event happen, and she's saying, but we need to maximise this opportunity. Yeah. So um, hopefully we can. But we do need to ask the right questions. Yeah, you know, so, if, so you know, we come up with each other, not just did you like it or did, where do you find it, something that gives them the opportunity to give their opinion but also gives us information yeah obviously we're more, more than happy to get feedback you know what this what do i say no publicity is bad but all publicity is good publicity but we're, we're happy to have feedback and if anyone does come into the centers or um phones up because occasionally get people obviously phone up the office and say well what's happening i'll say oh have you got facebook when they say no but okay if you pop down i'll print you some leaflets and actually over the Jubilee weekend, we had a few people pop in, I and I said, I can do some leaflets, that's fine, if you just bear with me two minutes, print them all off, because I've got them saved in the folders for like five months, so mm -hmm. we can do that, but yeah, it, it's about making sure we're reaching the entire community, and I, I understand Mike's point on that, and actually, we are trying hard to get the posters up in town, and the, the mm -hmm. group, building the groups and things for that, and um, but Terry's we'll right, he's the part. <laughs> Terry, did you remember your point? Yeah, there? I did, um, Many years ago, I used to run my own business organising coach trips to, to London, and we had a captive audience on the way back because um, they'd been and watched the show and whatever, and they were bored, frankly. Um, so we got people to fill out a questionnaire, and one of the questions was, uh, how did you hear about the trip happening? And what we found was we were spending a fortune advertising um, coach trips in places like the EDP, and it was costing us a lot of money. But the people that were attending were finding out about them through other means, so it gave us the opportunity to target where we advertise, frankly. Um, and, you know, if we can build in a sort of feedback option when we sell tickets or put events on, how did you hear about this, that sort of thing, it can help us target our marketing, uh, frankly, um, uh, or look at where people aren't coming from so we can see that one aspect is working and the other isn't. And two other points about communication, when I may while we're on marketing and communication, um, some things that, I'm, I'm not on Heritage and Town events, but I was quite surprised when they did the beacon lighting ceremony last week that we didn't use that as an opportunity to say to people, this is what also is coming up over the bank holiday weekend. I really thought there'd be a bit of an announcement to say, thank you very much for coming. Friday we have this. You know, you had a captive audience, frankly, and we, we need to get better as a council at grasping those opportunities because you had presumably 100 people that like Jubilee stuff, but we didn't tell them about everything else that was going on. So that's just 
one bit of feedback that you might want to take tomorrow. The other is about making sure councillors are communicated too. So I had people asking me, what's happening with the street party on the Sunday? I wasn't emailed or contacted as a councillor to tell me. I hadn't booked personally. I had my own arrangements on the Sunday, so I didn't know what was going on. If we are making big decisions as a council to cancel things like the street party, we have to get better at informing our councillors because we are, to many people, the council, and I certainly had people contacting me, and it is so embarrassing to say, I don't know if it's cancelled, I don't know what the alternative plans are, I'm really sorry, but you're, you're a councillor, why don't you know? I don't know why I don't know, but I had not a clue. Does anybody want to make comment on those points? Well, I, I mean, yeah, the, the, the first one is, again, it's, it's that it's that eyesight thing. But what we do is when we set events up, we have an event checklist. And that's all the tangible stuff that we need to do to deliver that event. What we need to do is an addendum to that, which actually says, how can we maximise marketing opportunities and communication and things like that? So I think um, that's that's all. I mean, uh, you know, um, I know that there's a, a couple of questions coming my way tomorrow and, and, and well, we'll touch on that. You know, how do we improve? And that's certainly going to be an improvement. Um, so um, it, it touches a little bit. Some of the other comments touches a little bit on the next agenda item, but um, but yeah, um, absolutely, yeah, we need to uh, we need to improve on that. Okay. I think you know, given that good airing, and I'm really grateful of the patience of the council is allowing to have this discussion because I think without it, we're not going to grow. You know, and uh, it's nice we've got Hazel on board and Tom work with Tom that we are in a better shape now than we were last month and two months ago, and so. Let's you know, carry on supporting you in you know going in the right direction because I think I've seen uh, uh, the light ahead. It's not an oncoming train. Hopefully, it is the end of this tunnel and we're we're getting out there. So so thank you for that and, and you know we'll see you again next month and uh, hopefully learn a little more about what plans you've got. But well, clearly, the two of you have got ideas in the embryonic stage, which um, hopefully we can we can take. Forward. So. So thank you for that. Um, so we'll move on then to 104.22, the weekly markets. Mm -hmm. David, did you have anything to? Is this one? Right. Um, so yeah, weekly markets. I oh, missed one. Well, it's communications, but I thought we probably just went probably through everything. Well, the only on... thing I actually Sorry. can I can I yeah. go back to that no, because there question. is a there is a key point within communications and. So basically what we've just done there is we've thrashed out the marketing of what we've done. So we're, we're, we're really, con and we have a, communicate, a marketing communication strategy and that's not appropriate. They're two separate entities. And actually if nothing else has come out of um, uh, the weekend, it's exactly what everybody's alluded to and it's how we need to improve our, our general communication. The marketing, yes, we are, we are concentrating on that. We've got a marketing campaign. We're we're uh, uh, making additions to how we get our sales of our products, whatever they may be, uh, out to the wider wider community. But general communication: um, How do we answer people's criticisms on social media? Is there a way that we can do it? Is there has been a fear factor in the past of if we say something, are we going to fuel the fire? Um, and actually, if you look at some of the posts, uh, they generally go off on a tangent and talk about everything in their granny. That's not anything about what the original post was about. Um, so we have to be very uh, careful. Uh, one thing that we have done in the last couple of weeks leading up to this agenda item is um, uh, Hayes has met with Nathan at Breckland District Council. <laughs> Breckland District Council are a bigger council than us. Then he's got a communication department, he heads up that, and he's had a couple of meetings with Hazel and passed on a lot of um, good information. So we're, we're very grateful for that. And we, and we, you know, I think Hazel's now got a, a relationship that if she ever had any issues that she just wanted to, um, to talk through with someone, I think he's someone that could help us. But from a communication point of view, I think what we need to do is a little bit more work on that. And actually, I would like to um, ask whether this is something we've talked about finance and reformatting it this is another one that's so important to the council that i think we have to have more people involved in how do we uh, structure that than possibly myself or 
or me and another member of staff. I think, as Terry said, you get it in the neck as councillors, you know, so there has to be a mechanism in there where we we protect and uh, and support you guys as, as you would us. Um, so we need to look at the communication strategy as a completely different entity. Um, and, and as a result of that, and in terms of marketing as well, but as a result of that, how do we measure success? You know, how do we know that we're doing something right? And again, you know, feedback is um, is critical. So in terms of the work that I promised that we would have, it actually opened up, especially this weekend, opened up a huge can of worms that um, that we need to address in a different way. So what I'm asking of the committee is that is there is there two or three councillors to work together with probably the senior management team uh, at, uh, at the town council that needs to sit down and thrash this out as a um, a more constructive communication strategy because we haven't got one. Okay. So just to clarify, we've got the marketing campaign and I think document. We're, we're, going, we're going in the right direction with that. I don't think we, we you know, we can, yeah. So I don't, has anybody seen that? Well, you've, you've yeah. seen this as part so, of the old document, but what we've done is we've obviously updated this with new outlets. So I can send you this part. You've, we thrashed out the 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 basic outline. I mean, I can send you that as well. But the yeah. basic outline of the mark. It was a marketing communication strategy. Right, yeah. Take out communications. That's the marketing Mark strategy. Mark. Yeah. So then, on the communication yeah. side, yeah. you're after what is going to be the town council's communication strategy? Because this committee has a responsibility to the overall communication of the town council, mm -hmm. and that is something that is critically critically important. Uh, as the weekend has shown, if we get it wrong, right. we're in trouble. So at the moment, if I recollect, we do have a communications policy. Well, we have a media policy. Media yeah. policy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, which is, again, it need, that needs to so go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Either changed or revised. Yeah. Um, so should we set up a working group to look at that with yeah. a view to developing the communications aspect within that media policy? Well, we need to change the media policy into a full-blown communication yeah. okay. strategy. Yeah. So could we have some volunteers who would like to get involved with that? Terry, Brenda? Yeah. I don't mind, but <laughs> So if we can... Uh, yeah, well, what, what I'll do is, I, I, but if you don't mind in this committee, I know this committee has a responsibility to that, but because it's a wider um, matter, I think if we pass it out to the rest of the councillors, and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but those four, yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So we'll leave that there then, Yeah. and then move on to one four. Sorry, Terry. Um, I'm a big believer, Terry, not reinventing the wheel, so if we could get before the first meeting uh, other it's good, you know, best practice examples from other councils. Yep. I mean, Swaffham, I know, has recently employed a new communications officer. They've got their own social media presence. They must have a communications yep. policy for Swaffham. Um, a town council I've looked at in the past that's been particularly good is Dover Town Council. Um, I don't know if they have a communications policy, but they're certainly very proactive online and stuff. So just just some examples. So, you know, let's not start square. Yep. You know, other people are doing good stuff. Let's follow their example. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so this is um, this is a standard item that we we address every uh, every meeting, and it's basically just to keep on top of what we're doing to try and improve uh, something that is uh, you know let's let's face it is struggling. Um, uh, so um, as the actions. Uh, at the beginning of this meeting stated is what else are we doing to try and create that extra footfall so in recent um, weeks we um, we did an assizes fair or Katie's team led it as part of the Guildhall Heritage uh, project and it was very very successful it did draw a huge crowd uh, into um, both the tea room and and the the general marketplace during the day uh, lots of people had some great fun um, but we also are now um, looking at trying to encourage more pop-ups, not necessarily just on market days, but in the general um, marketplace throughout the week. There was a, a, an incident actually, and uh, I speak to the lads, I spoke to the lads the last couple of days and they do know that I'm gonna sort of address this issue. They actually pitched up at Melford Common um, and, uh, and actually social media really supported them. They were going great guns, everybody liked their food, et cetera, et cetera. But because someone reported it to us, 
uh, a member of staff had to go down under the open spaces uh, policy and said that you can't just pitch up. Now, uh, I didn't really, you know, I mean, we, we have enough, enough negative uh, publicity as it is. So really, we, we didn't want to look as a council being, you know, absolute jobs worth. So um, I asked uh, the other team member to invite them to come up and talk to us about, you know, if you can't be at the Melford Common, uh, it's not working in terms of our policy, etc. You're more than welcome to come up to the market. So as of yesterday, they will be on the market Tuesday through till Sunday. Um, at various times during the day uh, and they will be paying um, a, a fee to be there. So again, we're going to generate some, uh, a little bit more income, which will go into the markets, weekly markets budget. Um, but again, um, even yesterday, um, you know, it created a bit of a buzz. The rest of the market traders were really keen to see a new presence there and hopefully that will generate it. Other people are talking about, well, why can't we have a few more of those and maybe have a, uh, a food trader type um, event and things like that. So, uh, and I was even actually talking to um, the area manager of Weatherspoons at the time. And, and, and I thought, well, he's not gonna be best pleased because they serve food at Weather. But actually he said, that's brilliant. That's an absolute brilliant idea. Why don't you get a few more to go down the other side? Uh, at the moment, we haven't got electrics on that side, but I won't. Uh, I'll quickly gloss over that one because <laughs> we're trying to get that scheduled in. Um, but again, lovely guys, great food, um, and um, you know, hopefully that will be the start of uh, improving improving that. Um, one of the other things that we we uh, we are doing is again asking our our um, market traders as to you know whether. Uh, once before, the market traders actually went out to other markets and tried to promote uh, Thetford Market for us. Uh, and we did, at, um, at that time, we did actually have, at one point, 20 different stalls on a Tuesday market. So I went back to the records and checked. Um, so again, they, you know, yes, they want us to do more, but yes, I don't think they've, you know, they've not necessarily fallen out with us to the degree where they won't do that. Um, and hopefully uh, they can attract some people. But what one of the traders said is, is there any special deals? Uh, apparently Brandon, um, Brandon Town Council's markets, they do deals that if you, uh, if you, I think they did a spell where they didn't even have to pay, but now they do one. If you come three weeks, you get the fourth week free and that kind of stuff. So I think it's something that we need to look into because Tuesday used to be a very, very busy market and it's now quite dire, to be honest. Um, so uh, so that's something we, we might be able to look into. Um, but again, I think what what is quite evident is that the additional activity around the market, as with the Assizes Fair, absolutely does the trick. So again, we need to be looking at those kind of events in the future. Um, I did look at, um, I did also look at the uh, Saturday market and, um, <coughs> I did take some pictures of the market from the outer um, vistas. So, uh, so these ones are from sort of the uh, the end of King Street. So the one on the right hand side, as you look at it, is from the rotunda. The other one is more central by the post office. And actually, you can't. I mean, it's a great view from the rotunda of um, the plant stall. So, and that on a Saturday is nice and colourful. The one, the other one is, is you know, you can't really see into the market. So it's something I'm, I'm discussing with the traders at the minute. Again, from another um, perspective, uh, from uh, Guildhall Street, again, yeah, the van is blocking the, the vista into the market. So you wouldn't know that there are two or three gazebos actually in the central part of it. And the other thing is we do, again, we have to be careful that we're not going to be too um, jobs worth against our traders when they're, they actually are attending and are reasonably regular. But we have a set of terms and conditions for trading. And uh, clearly the one on the left shows that um, the van behind the fish wagon is not a, uh, a vehicle that is needed to trade for that market uh, stallholder to trade. And it's actually in front of the sweet shop. So again, unfortunately for some of the traders, I'm going to have to go out and, um, uh, and talk about how we, we might have to take vehicles off the market um, and hopefully open up the vistas so people actually see that there are some stalls on there. Um, 
if not as many as we would want. So um, we are uh, we are trying to. Um, there are a couple of other stallholders that are are actually in the process of coming on um, to the market. So we might have another couple of stalls in in the next week or so. But again, I think what we will do is put a post out to say that you know we have got opportunities and actually publicise our um, pitch fees because. That's one thing that people on social media talk about, and it's not true. I mean, if you have a three by three meter gazebo, you can come onto our market for ten pound. I mean, you know, and we need to say that. So um, I think we'll, you know, we'll we'll look to get that post down. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I'm I'm going to comment on the general feeling seems to be great that we've closed the car park and it's now just in a good general open space but one of the biggest comments that comes to me through that is are you just going to leave it empty all week or, you know an open space and i said no we we're trying our best to to have things happening there i mean just having that new food wagon there is going to be a help because it does it draws people across um it's a space we've got to utilise as much as possible. So, you know, that's it, basically. Brilliant. Um, yeah, what Dave finished on is back to communications. Because people are, uh, people think, oh, these people are paying loads of money. They have to take their own waste away. They don't. In Brandon, they do have to take their own waste away, don't they? So they might be getting it cheap, but they have to dispose of their own waste where ours were provided them with a bin, which we end. So, you know, and unless you, we actually start to tell people, because sometimes they're silly questions and, and you think, you know what, I'm not going to bother to argue with you because I'm just telling you that, you know, you go into Facebook, you... You end up argue, don't you? Know, I'm not going to bother. If you can't be bothered to phone a council up and ask, I'm not going to bother with you because, you, you, you know, but if you put it out there in the first place, actually you've got this wrong, this is their charges, and this is what they get for them charges, mm -hmm. and then people are satisfied. Well, I, think, I, think, you know, I, mean, I think there's an opportunity there that David's identified to actually say, well, why not come along and uh, try your business out on yeah. the yeah. market for this amount and having that. See, we including waste disposal as, as, yeah. as a selling part. And we um, and it, it was Sharon uh, uh, on the uh, fish stall that actually uh, asked about the uh, come three time, pay for three weeks, get the fourth one three. I remember we did th that promotion um, several years ago. It was through our winter months, and actually, you know, the weather is a very you know significant factor for people to, especially in these times where fuel is so expensive, to come from quite a long way away. You have to make sure that you're going to earn your your income. But I remember that, uh, that period when we did that, and the only people who really benefited were the regular traders that come rain or shine. And my view is that they do come rain or shine. They have been coming 14, 15, 20 years. So from time to time, to give them a bit of a reward for their commitment, that's not a bad thing anyway. Um, so I think it might be something that we try. Um, and who knows? The good thing about that kind of promotion is they actually do have to come and pay for three weeks to get the fourth one free. So it's not giving everything away, but it's encouraging um, uh, people to come and try. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned about the activity, like the assizes fair. Are there any things like encouraging the busker to sit there for a couple of hours or something like that, or you've got uh, jugglers or something like that? So, so one one thing that we we have done in terms of the um, the budgets. Uh, and this is this is tomorrow's committee. Really, we have set aside some money for what we call market uh, marketplace activities. Um, it's not it's not hugely um, uh, large budget, but you know we have got an opportunity. And some of those activities on the assizes fair were, were well, that that event actually um, it was what it was one hundred and fifty pounds it cost us, and that was basically because we we got the traditional type of musicians for that particular we don't have to do that i remember when we did the night markets our total budget for a night market um was a hundred pound for the entertainment and actually in it, it's not always the case but in in those in that case what we used to generate from stall fees used to pay for that anyway so it was a bit of a you know no cost event terry you're going yeah, I was just going to ask, um, David, in the discussion earlier, you mentioned the 20-hour-a-week role for sort of market 
supervisor, I can't quite get the job title correct. Could you just confirm what they actually do within those 20 hours? Is it so pu purely market? Um, no. What do they do as part of that? So the person who is on 20 hours a week, um, we, again, I'll, you know, tomorrow I, I am going to put a slide up which actually does the MT's organisational chart so people are aware of, of what they do. We now call all of those people venues and event officers, but in brackets they have their primary focus. And in terms of that particular person, yes, it's important that their primary focus is the market. But believe me, of those 20 hours, they probably only work six hours across those markets. The rest of it is to support tea room, events, bar services, things like that. And that is the trend of all our staff members. We have a, you know, a multi-targeted um, uh, use of their time. But um, she is uh, the market supervisor to all intents and purposes. But I can tell you over the two markets, it's literally six hours a week. Okay. The, the reason I asked, I was in um, Cornwall recently and in one of the little towns we went to, they, they had a market on and I was chatting away with them. Um, and as part of their role, sort of collecting the fees, that promotion of the market and the market traders is part of their role. So they would be the ones that, you know, work with them to, you know, if they've got new products. And, and it just occurred to me, it's all about having a rapport with them and knowing the market traders. Are you bringing something new? Can we as a council promote it? Um, and I'm just wondering if we're not giving enough capacity to that role specifically for the market, because it, it really occurred to me last week or whenever it was when we had the market traders here about the Weatherspoons proposal. You know, they they should be hearing about that from the town council person that we have nominated to work on the market. You know, the relationship should be such that when big things like that happen, oh, by the way, are you aware? What do you think? Because these things are all about relationships, aren't they? And it just occurred to me that maybe we're not given enough capacity to the role of looking after the market. And part of that should be about marketing and communication and well, relationships. It, it, I mean, yeah, I take your point. There is that. I mean, you know, um, she she is a member of the council. So um, so we, we have we have phones that um, they are limited to use and things depending on your 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 role. But um, but they have the capacity to take photographs and things like that. And you can take a photograph and you know, uh, send it to Hazel and she can turn that into a, a, a promotional um, of a new product or whatever. Um, there is an, a, another element, though, that, they're, that you know, they that, that is their business. They should have a responsibility to promote their own business. Simon, the plant man, actually, you know, you'd never have thought that he would be on social media. He is and he puts his stuff on there. So does Scott, etc. So, again, maybe they need a little bit of help to try and nurture that as well themselves. Yeah. Um, but but actually, because we have closed down the market, and we're sorry, Chair, but we've gone on to the next agenda item. <laughs> right. um, but as we've closed down the market, yes, that person should be given a beefed up role to look outside our weekly markets into specialist markets and specialist activities uh, and try and get um, the place more vibrant with pop ups and things like that. So, um, the problem is she is also a very valuable member of the team that's good at, you know, bar and things like that. So, again, it's, you know, we just need to utilise the staff in, you know, in, in the best way we can. And, you know, we're trying to be as creative with everybody as these two guys will tell you. Yes. You know, they don't know what they're letting themselves in from or one week from another because it could be a mix of various different things. Sometimes, you know, um, again, they all, we're all on flexible contracts. Uh, we had one of our staff members that worked so many hours one week that she only could work 18 hours the next because that's how it goes. That's how it rolls. But, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, we'll take on all of those points. And Yeah, so if, if they're already doing the social media, that's yeah. something that we can link into yeah. or occasionally yeah. just and, yeah, push and it. We'll, we'll pick but up. also direction to our staff member to say yeah. if they notice something new yeah. on there, it's far out there and my 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 only concern and maybe this is me being overly um sort of negative in terms of, of you know weather is such a big thing what, what what we don't want to do is is put that promotion out to say come down and see our vibrant market and there's a spot of drizzle and people come down for the first time and go what market there's only two storeholders I mean, I've had a conversation with the guys on the Roasties van today, and I said, how did it go yesterday? Yeah, it was great. But, you know, we've, they're good at social media as well. I've said to um, I've said to Hazel, leave it until Thursday, Friday. Let them find their space. 
let's go back to them and say, is it something that you think is going to be viable and you're going to be here for, you know, for the foreseeable future? And if that is the case, then we'll do a big promotion on them to say, look, come down, the food's great. And, uh, you know, that kind of that kind of promotion. But we've already talked about that. But I don't want to go out there too early. And then by Friday, they've said, actually, it's not working. But it is catch 22, really, because if we don't drum up the train for them, they will leave. So I understand the point. Are they get are, are you sorting out um, or are they sorting out their license? And that no, they, they, they would. They would. Oh, no, 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 no. They, they actually, in some respects, they actually prefer it to be in the centre of town. Right, yeah. Um, you know, so I think I don't think that's an issue now. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Segue into marketplace working group then, David. Yeah. So I mean, it is just it is just the fact that um, well, really, from full council, we have got the meeting with um, all the tenants around the market square uh, and the market traders and and anybody else that wants to sort of throw their six penneth in really on the twenty first of June. Um, to absolutely, and I and I asked, I, I've asked the traders, all the market traders, because I, I think some of them have said, is it only Simon and Scott that can come along? Absolutely not, you know. So I think that you'll find a couple of other traders that will come along. But what I've said to them is, is um, yes, it's come about because of an application that, that at Weatherspoon's made, but let's not just focus on that. Let's focus on how do we make the marketplace the vibrant space that we all want that will benefit all of us. Um, so I think hopefully they'll come with some of their own ideas of how we can improve that space as well, because Dennis is absolutely right. The last thing we want to do, and I think, you know, I know Terry was against it from the out outset. And, and actually, I remember one of Terry's comments was the problem I can see is 90% of the time it's going to be a big lump of tarmac with nothing on it. And, and, and that's resonating in here. And I'm striving to try and make it more. And, I, and But having said that, um, there is going to be times when you walk past it and it is going to be an empty space, but there is no town square or or, or city um, marketplace that's that's not got it as a car park that's vibrant all the time. Even when we've had an empty space, we've had kids playing football on there, we've had bubbles going on there. Things. Not I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not too, uh, I'm a bit concerned about the football list. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that has gone down quite well um, is the uh, is the planters on Guildhall Street. Oh, really? Now, during the uh, week leading up to Jubilee, we did have some people come and say, and actually, actually, there was a lady who kept walking over the over the marketplace saying, uh, "Is this all about the evil House of Windsor?" <laughs> which, which was quite funny at times. But um, she did say, "Is all this expense going in? And as soon as the jubilee is over, are you going to take them down?" Well, blimey, you know, having lifted some of those sleepers to help me, we get no way. Um, but ninety percent of the comments that we've seen actually, you know, actually like it. Um, we've we've utilised the same benches, but you do get this secure wrap round of the hedging behind you and the and the hopeful hopefully colourful planters in the in the two bedded parts at either side. So we've had some really good feedback actually for those and that's a good thing. But what the other what other comments have been is we've shut, shut the market down and is this it? So we can't stop here. We've got to keep we've got to keep so then so good things chair just to come back to you. Uh, we've had the electricians in today that we'll be replacing some of the lights under the shambles. They're working on that and we will have the new lights on the slope of the guild hall going up. Uh, as soon as we can. But the electric box timing, what's the electric feed on Guildhall Street? Uh, we, so that, hopefully, we've gone back, we've made a decision, uh, we're going with the uh, the contractors that have come up with the um, with the really attractive cap. So, basically, they're just coming in, in uh, hopefully, the next month to do that. We've got the work on the Royal British Legion happening at the moment, so we've got to get that out of the way before they start trunking it across uh, along uh, Guildhall Street, but you know, hopefully over the next you know month or so, you'll see a bit more activity and, and a bit more upgrade. The Guildhall, the two room planters, and obviously the totem chairs can go out, but the totem chairs can go out. But, but again, you know, one thing I did notice yesterday, which was a bit cheeky, and uh, I know the guy and his wife, so I did uh, I did have a bit of banter with him. But he went and bought his lunch from Roasties and sat at our tables and chairs, which I thought was a bit cheeky, but. 
he didn't know any different, no. to be honest. It needs to be demarcated with uh, some of the planters with our logo on the side. Um, so, the timing of those is what a month well, or so. Well, unfortunately, uh, they're, they're, they are half built, uh, and then the person who was doing that job is, is not is not with us. He's gone off to do other stuff now. So um, Graham has taken a well earned rest uh, for the next week. He's got on holiday. Um, but when he comes back, he's going to put some time in just to clad those planters. So hopefully you'll see something out there in the next, well, by the end of next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terry then back there. Yes, so about the planters in the picture up there. Uh, I'm all for increasing the number of uh, opportunities to get plants out and about. But I was quite surprised because we've got black benches, black bins, and black's a fairly sort of adopted heritage colour. And I was quite shocked to see this sort of earthy, wooden type look to them. I'd much prefer them painted black. We and we can absolutely do that, Terry. But the problem is, uh, I mean, I was, you know, I haven't slept for three weeks. I'll be honest with you, because the schedules were like getting tighter and tighter. The hedging went in literally at the death. I mean, so ideally, that that would have been. Uh, rolled back at least a fortnight um, and uh, we could have done that in fact some of the other councillors have asked are we gonna are we gonna stain them are we gonna but you know there's no reason why we can't um we can't stain black, we can't stain, black, we can't you stain, can stain black 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 black. Black. and actually you know there is ways that you can put a crest into the into the wood as well better mm -hmm. so yeah well, i was gonna say about the tables and chairs up the suggestion i had when i was coming down from the guild hall earlier is a lot of places do put tables and chairs out for each other. So if it does pick up with the with the young lads, and that is, I agree, they're nice young lads, for the taters and that and the guild hall, then the chairs could go out and it could be... Well, you go into a lot of shopping yeah, malls, don't you? And there's like a seating area outside, and you can go. So, yeah, thing, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. ideally, if you've got an event going on, you know, and you're a family, you know, the, the, the child is going to run off to Coco's and get a bag of pick and mix. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to, mum's going to get a coffee and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we have more tables and chairs. It's just that at this moment in time, we're only utilising three, but we can have, well, I think we've got seating up to 24. So there's no reason why we can't enter into that agreement and, um, you know, so, it, yeah, it's all about partnership working. So if you get more stalls around there, vendors around there, it'd be ideal. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that then. On to 106.22, compliments and complaints. Well, um, even though we've had a lot of Facebook traffic, uh, the town clerk hasn't received any formal complaints, not that she's spoken to me about. Um, and similarly, we haven't had any written compliments that we've received, um, but both, uh, obviously, we've had um, some social media um, complaints of disgruntlement. Um, we're trying to uh, address those. And we've had a lot of verbal uh, compliments, as we've already um, mentioned about plants. And <coughs> some people did enjoy the Jubilee, so um, I don't think it was a complete waste of time. Okay. One is seven twenty-two community engagement. We got any suggestions, or we have talked about the market, of trying to say well, these are stall fees and all that type of thing. Um, we're doing, you know, the new flyers and that which we've, we spoke about but is there anything else that we haven't touched upon that we want to bring up to brenda um just being uh, under um communications and communicating um with the local local people um yes we've, we've got that stall because by accident he parked in the wrong place and you know the council found out about it so we've dealt with that but there's lots of people that they go out and they do they do little things but it's if we've got the prices out there, what it costs just just say for example, I I, I do candles, you know, and, and you know, women do that. You do candles. You, did you know to come onto the marketplace it would cost you this yeah. for so many hours? You know, and it's just doing that because I think and it can be any day of the week provided there's no events on. You, you know, you're offering them that choice. But I think we do need to, sometimes we just are too accommodating. So we do need to be realistic. I think, you know, there needs to be this two two tier uh, cost because, I mean, 10 years ago, this council got a grant from Breckland to purchase 20 gazebos. And those, we are now down to a stock level of 10. 
because they have, you know, uh, you know, whether, you know, whether they were those over there. We have replaced some of the canopies, which are is a downside cheaper, but some of the frames. And what we haven't done is because we've given it away for so small a fee, we haven't built up a contingency to replace those. So I think there needs to be a two tier. So it doesn't need to be a lot. That. They um, might supply that themselves. What I'm saying is, all you're saying is, this is what's on offer. You can have so yeah. many tables. Yeah. This is what it would cost you for the day. Yeah. We didn't. You're not telling them that you're going to uh, give them a marquee. If they want a marquee, they can. Well, lots, of, lots of these people, if, people, if, people if, yeah. if they, if they are more professional traders, yeah. they'll have their own. These guys have their own, obviously. Um, but but yeah, we, we just need to, to do that um, because we need to build up a contingency. Having said that, over 10 years, it's like everything, you know, the price of the gazebos have come down, you know, massively. So you can actually buy a new gazebo with a uh, canopy and four sides for virtually half the price you did 10 years ago. But we just need that sum of money to build up. Um, so, yeah. So then 108.22, committee officers update. So no, I have nothing to add. Thank everybody very much for their attendance and contributions. Um, David, where's the one that market meeting? Where is it at? It's going to be in here because it's... Uh, personnel. Personnel, personnel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.